Hi everybody, Carrie Bauckham here. Welcome back to another episode and welcome back into my classroom. It has been a month since you guys have been here with me and I have so much to tell you. So let's get started. We have just finished up a full four, three days of park testing. It's just your big, it's one of your big state tests to take multiple days for students to take. So, you know, aside from being winter, it's March here in Illinois. Um, it's just a real drudge. We had a nice streak of nice spring weather and now all of a sudden we've been slammed with 20 degree weather on top of state testing, it really sucks the life out of a classroom. As I was planning for this week, it reminded me of a favorite thing to do when we have these longer stretches of um, more academic intensive moments or, or state testing. Time is to infuse my classroom with mini games. Mini games are like these brain breaks in video games. If you've ever played Mario Brothers, you'll see those. They're like kind of an offset. You'll be playing the video game and then you'll go off to this other room. Maybe you'll spin a, a spin a, like a, a jackpot wheel or you'll jump on the wall and try to grab different things to match them. And then the game gives you a brain break from the game and then it rewards you with an item or a power up and it gives you a boost. So mini games do the same thing in a classroom. So I wanted to share with you guys three of my favorite tools that I love for mini games. So my first favorite thing for mini games and so hold yourselves on this, guys, okay? Painter's tape. Painter's tape, guys. Mm hmm So, painter's tape is sticky. Painter's tape can be put on things. You can write on painter's tape also. Right? Painter's tape can be put on tables to section it off. And then, um, my, and then you can make games out of off of a table. Painter's tape can be put on a board to section it off and you can write different things on it. Um, and then students have to hit certain marks on a board. Painter's tape can be put on the floor and you can do fun things with it too. It's just a really fun tool for me and I created my most random and last minute games using painter tape and a Sharpie. My second favorite are these guys right here. Expo markers. I love to draw things on my board or crazy designs on my board with points and XP and I love for students to either throw things at the board or have a chance to select things on the board and it's just a super fun easy way I can whip those up to in like you know under five minutes. My third favorite thing is this right here colored paper or even scrap paper. It's paper, right? Kids can write on it. They can write their answers to what you're saying. Paper can also get crumpled up. And it does a lot of different things when it's crumpled. Remember back in the day, you know? So it can be tossed, it can be slid. Um, that painter's tape that I've used to put on a table I can section it off with different points and students can play shuffleboard with the paper if they get the answer right. That board that I use with Expo Marker can be tossed at and hit with paper. And if they hit the mark, they get a point. They get some XP. Um, there's also that thing called a garbage can that makes a really good hoop. So students can be sitting at their desk and they have to shoot if they get the right answer. Um, you could use multiple garbage cans in different places for them to shoot the paper and they could get points for that. I've even had it where I've labeled chairs and tables and the board and the, um, the thing on the board that holds the markers. I can't remember what it's called, the eraser holder? I don't know what it's called. But I've labeled those with XP and then students have to shoot from around the room and if they hit different spots on the room, they get XP. Okay, I have more than three of you guys, okay? So, remember how I told you I love Expo markers, right? Mm -hmm. Drawing on the board, super fun to do. These little guys, they're called Flingons, and I'll put a link to them below. They're magnetic, flexible X's. 
see. These are absolutely fantastic. Throw them at the board and they stick on the dry erase board and they're awesome. So you think about the expo markers and the drawings on the board and then a magnetic little fling on. Mm-hmm. Super, super amounts of fun and giggles and laughter. And you can use the painter's tape to draw different lines of distance that they have to throw from, depending on what rules you've made for your game. Super, super fun time. And then my last knit little trick that I love. It's, I got this at a game fair, and they're just called a trek, but they're little magnets. These little magnets, see? And they stick. So you remember the painter seat with the table or the floor that's all marked off with XP on it? These little guys are flat. See? And they attract, but they also repel because magnets do that right. So like they bounce off each other, lay them on the table and you slide them. And if the kids pick up the magnets, uh, if, the if the magnet picks up the other magnet and then lands on a spot for XP, boom, XP. Um, so super, super fun stuff that you can do with stuff that's in your cabinet. So, I mean, like the attractions, you know, the fling-ons, a little bit of investment, but painter's tape and expo markers and paper, we all have that in our cabinets. So, what I want you guys to do is if you're in love with mini games like I am, and I really love them, you guys, they add such a great boost, and they're such like, they're such a great gateway into full-on gamification. You can play mini games once a week, you can play them once a month. You're just a, you can play them whenever you want to. And so the way I create mini games is this. Think about like what's the purpose of my game? What's the goal of my game? And it's always great to add academics into our games. And we're teachers after all, right? Our goal is for our students to learn things and take things away from our classroom. So think about what the purpose is. Why are they playing this game? What is their what is their purpose to learn? And then also, or what is the purpose of the game? Maybe it's a review. Maybe it's to practice skills. And then what is the, the purpose of this for the student? What is the goal of the game? Right? How do they win the game? So think about those two things first. Then decide on what type of game you want to play. What little tools, what little knickknacks, what little things that you have around your classroom that you want to use to play the mini game. And then you're going to create the rules. And the most wonderful thing about mini games is you are the game designer. You are the one creating the rules. And there are no wrong ways to create the rules for your game because it's your game. And then lastly, unleash the game on your classroom and let it play out. Have fun with it. Change it and keep it in beta as they're playing with it. Fix it. And then when you find it and it's just the way you like it, put it in your pocket and save it for next time. And then keep creating and keep trying new mini games and keep infusing your classroom with fun and engagement and energy and, um, and continue to bring out the really awesome skills that our students have. Man, I love talking about mini games and I could talk about it forever. And I seriously cannot wait till, the, till next month when I get to bring you back into my classroom and talk to you more about what's happening in my game. I still have more updates that I want to share with you guys about what's going on. Um, but that's really it for today. So until next time, you guys, remember, whether it's bringing out the best in your students, learning or creating, or just being you, there are no rules. Later, guys.